you just got yourself a new iPad. Let me help and give you some tips for getting started and getting the most out of your Apple tablet. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. I am thrilled that you are spending some time with me today as I help you get the most out of your new iPad. It is Andrew from Apple Insider here and let's just go ahead and dive right into this video. By the way, if it helps, use those chapter markers down below to skip ahead to the sections that make sense to you. Currently, Apple has several different iPads in its lineup and you may have gotten any of them. So whether you've got something like an iPad Pro, whether you've got the basic iPad, whether you went up a little more and you have a new iPad Air, or maybe you wanted something really portable and you picked up the new iPad mini. A lot of this is going to apply to just all iPads. So hang out with me regardless of which tablet you may have in your hands or even watching this video on. When you turn your iPad on for the very first time, you're gonna walk through a series of setup steps that guide you along the way of getting your iPad ready to go. There are a couple quick parts of this that I wanna to briefly touch on. One of them is authentication. You do not have to have a passcode for your iPad, though Apple highly recommends that you do. Along with that passcode, there are different versions of biometric authentication that different iPads have. iPad mini, iPad Air, and iPad all have Touch ID to get you into your device. The iPad Pros, on the other hand, rely on Face ID. You still don't have to use these biometrics, you can just stick with your passcode, but it is a lot easier to gain access to your device. You also may be transferring over data. It just depends on if you're coming from an older iPad or setting this one up as new. During the setup process, Apple will ask you if you wanna move your data and you can pull it over from an existing iPad or from an iCloud backup. Be sure your iCloud backup is up to date on your old iPad before moving it over to the new iPad. After the onboarding process, we recommend a few settings that you should take a look at to make sure they're customized to your likings. The first is going to be parental controls, if this is for a kid. Now, if this is for your child and you don't want them blindly making purchases, you can enable parental controls that'll help monitor how long they're using the device, what apps they're using on their device, the hours they have access to the device, as well as monitoring purchases. So they have to ask you for permission before they can go and spend $100 on gems inside of some free to play game. So if this is for a child, consider setting up those parental controls. Another section of settings that we recommend taking a look at when you set up your new iPad is focus. Focus modes are new with iPadOS 15 and iOS 15. And if you have iOS 15 and you're signing with your Apple ID on your iPhone, those same focus modes will sync over to your iPad, but you can create new ones as well. Focus modes help determine what notifications come through based on the focus mode that you're in. You can create a focus mode for sleeping and that way you don't have certain notifications come in while you're asleep. You could also set up ones for working so you only have work related notifications coming in and you don't get bombarded with Twitter or Facebook notifications. You can create as many focus modes as you'd like and you can switch between them at any time from Control Center. Finally, take a quick look at notifications. You can turn on scheduled summary so notifications get broken down between immediate ones that come in when they happen or ones that are included in your scheduled summary that'll appear one or two times a day at the times that you predetermine. It makes it much easier to control notifications so you're just not bombarded. This, combined with focus modes, makes you incredibly productive on your iPad. Don't forget to have some fun and personalize your iPad as well. If you go into settings, you can control your wallpaper and background for both the lock screen as well as the home screen of your device. Have some fun with it. Apple has a bunch already in there, but you can use any photos that you have in your camera roll or that you download online as well for a great wallpaper. Additionally, rearrange all those app icons. Put what you like right up front, put some additional ones in the dock, and don't forget to take advantage of folders and app library. You can hide different home screens and access all of your apps right at the end of your home screens inside of the app library. Additionally, you can access the app library from there inside of the dock. And again, something else new this year is widgets. Take advantage of widgets. Many of Apple's stock apps already have widgets available to you, but many apps that you download from the App Store will have their own widgets as well. Speaking of the App Store, you should probably go and download some apps for your iPad too. Look for whatever you need. There's apps for pretty much everything, and I'm sure you already know this. 
to download any apps that you may have already purchased on previous iPads or maybe over on your iPhone, download essentials like Twitter or Facebook, and find any that help you be productive, such as the iWork suite from Apple or Microsoft Office. There's a bunch here, so just get in there and look through the App Store and see what tickles your fancy. The iPad really has grown up, and there's so much you can do with basic ones all the way up to the iPad Pros. Let me know what your favorite iPad is or what favorite accessories you have down below in the comments. And if you have any questions about your new iPad, ask me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and I'll do my best to answer them.